All right, three more FRQs, off we go. So hopefully you've seen all these before, but if not, that's why we practice. And if you have, that's why we practice. Let's see if I get my pen to actually work properly here. There we go. Uh, so I always say if I'm asked to do a Riemann sum, I've got to graph it in 2, 5, 10, and then 2.9, 6.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, 3 And they say do a left Riemann sum, so that's this sort of thing. So it is, don't forget your units, volume equals 50.3 times 2 plus 14.4 times 3 plus 6.5 times 5 should get 176.3 cubic feet hopefully that one makes sense to you is an over or underestimate um, so real easy it's a decreasing function uh, so clearly it's an overestimate and you always just say because it is a decreasing function suddenly you decide to completely change up the problem from what it was already doing. Uh, this is a calculator problem. Uh, I can imagine on this year's test it'll say something like set up but do not solve. So the volume is just very simple. Integral from 0 to 10. And you can actually just write f of h. I'll write it out to be polite. E to the 0 0.2 H plus H DH. That's key. Don't forget that. Um, it's a definite integral, so you just put that in your calculator and blast, and you should get 101.325 cubic feet. And last but not least for this problem, D. Water's pumped into the tank, blah, blah, blah. Hey, we give you a rate. All right, this is going to be a... Um, what do you call it, related rates problem. So, uh, we need to set up the volume. Well, the volume is just the integral from 0 to some dummy variable x of f of h dh. 50.3 e to 0 0.2 h plus h dh. Well, now we're taking the derivative ddt with respect to time. So these cancel out, and you end up with dvdt just equals this at 5, and then chain rule, dhdt. So function at 5, plug it in, 50.3 e to the 0 0.28 times, e to the 0 0.2 times 5, plus 5 times, I believe they gave us, 0 0.26, deliberately avoiding all of the units, um, but that is volume, so that's going to be 1.694 cubic feet per minute. All right, and onwards. This should start looking very familiar. This should be, wow, I think I've seen this a billion times. I'm getting sick of it. Hopefully that's the case. Um, I'm going to just stop and say uh, f of negative 6 interests me, f of negative 2 interests me, f of 2 interests me, and f of 5 interests me. And the reason I'm picking those points is that uh, endpoints, and then here and here. Um, so those are the reasons I'm picking those points. Um, I'm just going to leave it up there for now. So let's find the values of f of negative 6 and f of 5, which is very nice for them. Uh, so it'll 
do some of our endpoints for us. Uh, f of negative 6, since this starts at, where did they put it? Right there, is basically the integral from negative 2 of the derivative graph plus 7. And I'll actually put it down here, f of negative 6 equals uh, so we start at negative 2, and we're going left above the graph, so it's a negative number, negative 1 half, times 4 times 2, uh, plus 7, plus 7, that equals 3. f of 5 is um, negative 1 half, because it's half a circle, pi times 2 squared, uh, plus 1 half, 3 times 2 plus 7, which should get you 10 minus 2 pi. So those are my two answers for part A. Then we go on to part B. It says, one interval is f increasing. Now this gets a lot of people because they say, well, it's going negative. It's above the graph. Now, now we look all the way from left to right, and it's increasing anytime it's above the x-axis. So the answer is simply negative 6 to negative 2. And if you've worked with me before, you know I hate the brackets. I would much rather use the parentheses, but this is the way they do it on the College Board website. And then from 2 to 5. And that's just where f... Interesting. Let's see if this comes back. It does not. All right. It'll probably magically pop up in a few minutes. Negative 6, comma, negative 2. Very upsetting. Uh, this is where f prime of x is greater than 0. Um, f is increasing. You may want to word it a little bit more carefully than that, but I think that's actually more than sufficient. And then c find the absolute minimum value on the closed interval. Now, careful on this one. The answer key says check f of negative 2. I did not. Uh, we'll check it anyway, but that's where it's going from a positive slope to a negative slope, so that's going to be a max. So I did not bother checking it, but among other things, it's very easy to check. I'll actually do it up here. f of negative 2 is 7, because it gives us to us more or less. And f of 2 is just uh, this part plus 7, of course, so it is uh, 7 minus 2 pi. And which one of these is the smallest? Well, this is 7, 7 minus 2 pi, so that's smaller. 6, f of 6 is, delete it again, that's so weird. f of 6, f of 5 is 10 minus 2 pi, and f of negative 6 is 3, so the 7 minus 2 pi is the smallest one. It's 2 pi is about 6.28. So 7 minus 6.28 is a little bit less than 1. So the absolute min, and I am always super careful here, absolute min is 7 minus 2 pi. And happens, I would actually usually say occurs, but I can't spell occurs for some weird reason today, at x equals Actually, usually write it the other way around, but that'll have to do. Alrighty. For each of these, find the value or explain why it does not exist. So, f double prime of negative 5 is just the slope of the line at negative 5, which you can actually see right here. And that is. Pen's giving me trouble here. Negative 1 half. And f little prime of 3 does not exist. And I'll go with the limit definition, well, one of the limit definitions, because uh, the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative side of f prime of x minus f prime of 3 over x minus 3 does not equal the limit as x approaches 3. Keep making my arrowheads into 3's. From the positive side of f prime of x minus f 
prime of 3 over x minus 3. In other words, we have a corner, and we can't find that value at the corner. All right, now our favorite one. Boy, this was a fun Twitter uh, blow up a couple years ago about the potatoes. There was also bananas, I think, on this one. Um, but not this problem on this test. Uh, potatoes taken out of an oven, and I actually just like doing this. Hey, it's 91 degrees, and there's your asymptote that the room temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. And I didn't throw the Celsius in everywhere because it's just a quick note for me, uh, but I like doing that just in terms of, all right, what's going on here? So they want an equation of the tangent line right here. Well, that problem, that point is 0, 91, and dh dt is kind of given is negative 1 fourth h minus 27 so dh dt at h equals 91 is negative 1 fourth uh, all that nonsense uh, gets you to negative 16 so the y minus 91 equals negative 16 times x minus 0 t minus 0 y equals negative 16 t plus 91 and I should not call it y so let's fix that let's call it uh, h of t equals good and then h of the estimated approximate I believe too much paperwork on my desk. Got it. Oh, it's sitting right in front of me. Uh, H of 3, plug in 3, and you should get 43 degrees Celsius. Do not forget this. And here I would even think about writing T in seconds, H of T in degrees Celsius. Uh, they won't ask for it, but I'm a stickler, so couldn't hurt. All right, part B. Uh, take second derivative, which is ludicrously easy, even though it looks really, really hard. So the second derivative of this is t squared h dt squared. We'll distribute the negative one fourth, and that's just a number. It drops out. Negative one fourth h becomes negative one fourth times chain rule dh dt. These all should be capital H's everywhere I've been writing them. Um, and dh dt we know is negative one-fourth times negative one-fourth. Uh, if you're confused by this, so was I the first time I do it, and since then I've learned to just accept it and move on with my life. And I sleep a lot better at night, so good advice. One-sixteenth h minus 27. Since h is always greater than 27, this is always positive. So I will say this is positive, so d squared h dt squared greater than zero. Since it's concave up, it's going to be an overestimate. Pardon me, underestimate. Don't know what I was thinking there. And you can see that from my original graph, the tangent line goes down. And part C, again, another one of these. Hey, we're changing it completely up on you. I'm a little tight on space. Nope, nope, I'm good. So, they hit you with brand new thing. dg dt equals negative g minus 27 to the two-thirds. And this is a great problem. I would fully expect to see this on this year's test. Over g minus 27 to the two-thirds equals negative dt. And then I would write it up top, g minus 27 to the negative 2 thirds, dg, negative dt. Add 1, get 1 third, divide by 1 third, get 3. g minus 27 to the 1 third equals negative t plus c. Uh, plug in uh, the values they gave, uh, 0, 91. We get 3 times 91 minus 27 is 64. The third root is 4. Equals negative t plus c. Uh, pardon me, negative 0. Negative 0 plus c. Therefore, c equals 12. 
So we swing it up here and we get 3g minus 27 to the one third equals negative t plus 12. Now at this point you can start doing things any way you want. Um, as long as you get the same approximation you're good to go. So you get negative t plus 12 over 3 and if I know these guys are going to want to write it the other way. They love putting their negatives second. So 12 minus t. And then it's cubit, cubit, and then add 27. So g of t equals 12 minus t over 3 to the third plus 27. And as always, hey, what's going on with g of 3? 12 minus 3 is 9 over 3 is 3. 3 to the third is uh, 27 plus 27 is 54 degrees Celsius. All right, go calculus, go calculus. Anyway, that's a lot. Hopefully at this point it becomes much quicker, much more second nature. If you're still struggling, still got a couple weeks, not a big deal. Uh, if you're struggling on one or two parts of problems, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, but if you're struggling completely, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. Good luck.